My name is Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com and welcome back to another episode of Homeschooled. For today's project, I'm going to show you how to trim out a newly installed window. In previous videos, I've shown you how to install a new window and why newer windows can help improve the overall energy efficiency of your home. But today, I'm going to show you how to add the finishing touches on the inside of your home by installing the trim around the window. Now in this case, these are considered new construction single hung windows, even though they were installed as part of a remodel. Single hung means that only the bottom sash moves up and down. In double hung windows, both the top and the bottom sashes can move. Now if you're dealing with replacement windows, you may not need to tackle a lot of the steps I'm gonna outline, but this video will also help you if you decide you'd like to modify the existing casing around your windows to a different look or different style. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This one can be a little difficult depending on how many windows you're dealing with, their layout, and the style of trim and casing you choose to use. In this case, I'm going to be trimming out this cluster of windows. There are two windows on one wall and a third that wraps around the corner. This is likely a bit more involved from a trim perspective than most windows, so by showing you what's involved in this case, a single window on its own should be pretty simple for you. I've put together a 3D model to help illustrate what the finished product is gonna look like and how I'm going to be doing each step to hopefully help clarify things for you. So to get started, first you want to make sure that the area around the windows has been insulated properly. You can use window and door spray foam for this or another type of insulation. Just make sure the area between the window and the jam is insulated all the way around. Also make sure that no drywall or debris is in the way around the window itself. Next, you'll need to decide on the style and the look of the trim you're gonna be using. In this case, I'm using a basic primed pine trim for all the trim and the casing itself. I'll be using the same materials throughout to create a basic craftsman style look, but you may want to use a more decorative trim or find a matching look for the rest of your house. Have a look around and make sure you get the right material that works for you and the design sense that you have. Now that we have our material, first we'll construct what's called the stool. This is the bottom of the window on the inside and sometimes people mistakenly refer to it as the sill. The stool is the inside shelf while the sill is on the exterior. The stool is going to stick out one each on each side beyond the casing which is called the horn. So I'm measuring the windows and notching the cuts so the stool sits in place. The thickness of the side casing you choose will dictate how much of an extra overhang you'll need on your horn, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later on. The stool will stick out from the wall an inch and a half total. Take your time in making these measurements and these cuts so that you don't have any big gaps. It's better to cut it a little bit long and then creep your way up on it so you get a nice tight fit and you don't have any big gaps. Once I have the pieces fit, I'm using a quarter inch roundover bit on my trim router to add a little contour to the stools, and then I'll install it by making sure it's level both side to side and front to back. You may have to add a shimmer too to make it level if it's not lining up for you. Once it's installed, I'm attaching it to the framing with some inch and a half brad nails. Next, we'll add the opposite piece across the top of the windows. This process is pretty much the same as the stool, except this piece should be ripped to be even with the surrounding drywall. Level and attach this piece with brad nails and shim it if necessary. From there, we can work on the side stops. These are the vertical pieces that dress up over the framing. In this case, there are a bunch of them, but on a single window, you'll just have the left and the right. Again, these should be ripped to the thickness between the edge of the window and the face of the surrounding drywall. Plumb them with your level and attach them with brad nails. In this case, I'm gonna need a couple extra side stops in the corner where it wraps around. So I'll measure these and build a piece to go in the corner. I'm gonna have what's called an eighth inch reveal on all the casings all the way around, which is this small gap between the corners. So I make sure that I have that spacing on the corner piece when I build it, and then I install it in place. So that builds out the inside of the window trim, and now we can focus on the trim around the outside edge. If you're working with replacement windows, this is likely where you'll start if you are updating the trim. The first thing we need to do is measure the length of the side casings from the stool to the top of the window. Because I have that eighth inch reveal around the windows that I mentioned before, I'm adding an eighth inch to my overall measurements of the casings, so that it'll stick up just above the height of the window. Because this is a basic craftsman style casing, I'm just using the three and a half inch wide primed pine as the side casing. So when I measured earlier to cut the stool, I measured the full width of the windows and then added the width of my side casing plus one inch. And that gave me the full length of my stool cut. 
Next, we can move on to the head casing. The head casing is the decorative piece across the top of the window. And what's cool about this craftsman style is that you can kind of get as fancy as you like by building out your own profile. The craftsman style also helps you eliminate a lot of miter cuts, so it's not as difficult to get those nice tight miters. So you can just butt everything together, which kind of makes it a little bit simpler. In this case, I'm gonna keep it pretty clean and just build a basic craftsman head casing by using one piece of three quarter by three and a half inch pine and two pieces of three quarter by one and a half inch pine, and I'm gonna sandwich them all together. I'm adding the same quarter inch round over on the one and a half inch pieces, and then gluing and fastening them to the three and a half inch piece with brad nails. The inch and a half pieces should stick out beyond the end of the three and a half inch piece, the same one inch as the stool, and where the two pieces meet up in the corner, I miter each end at 45 degrees and attach the whole thing in place. To finish up the trim job, lastly, we'll add an apron, which is the bottom piece under the stool. In this case, I'm just cutting two pieces at the width from the edges of each side of the casing and installing them under the window. Normally, I would add a slight 15 degree mitered cut to the ends of the apron, but because of the way this falls on the bench below with the existing trim, I'm gonna choose not to do that in this case. So that's it. All that's left to do is to use some painter's putty to patch the brad holes, caulk the seams and around the edges of the window, and paint the trim your color of choice. Once that's done, you can dress it up further by adding some blinds, curtains, or a combination of the two, and you are done with this project. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. This project falls into the finished carpentry category and is on the more involved end of the DIY project spectrum, but once you get a little practice under your belt, it's something that I think you can likely tackle on your own and gives you a lot of freedom to create the window trim style of your choice. And I'd like to give myself a little bit of a bonus shout out for not making any poop jokes during this entire episode for all the times that I said stool, which is now over because I've now done it. Thank you guys for watching. And if it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of the new content I put out. And if you have questions about anything I touched on in this video, please leave those in the comments down below or feel free to hit me up on social media at the links down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.